China, a home that I never knew. It's a confusing one, really. A lot of people automatically assume that since I'm from Hong Kong, that I should also be very familiar with China. But that's really not the case. China feels more like a foreign country to me. Every time I visited, there would always be the sense of detachment. We all looked the same, we spoke the same languages, shared the same traditions, but yet we lived very differently. That said, I've always been intrigued by China. I want to get a better understanding of why it's the way it is, and uncover some of the mystique that surrounds it. Now more than ever. And that's why I bought this book. I get a lot of inspiration from Magnum photographers. They are the pinnacle of documentary, candid, and street photography, whatever you want to call it. They are the best in the business, and I want to learn everything I can from them. One thing that I didn't know was that a lot of these photographers actually spent a very long time documenting life in China. Usually, when you search for the photos, you'll see their work from Europe or the U.S. Rarely will you ever find photos of Asian countries that they've documented, let alone China. So it felt like I discovered a gold mine when I found this book. When you think of Brisson, you think of a man jumping over the puddle, or that hole in the wall photo. But now for me, when I think of Brisson, it's going to be these photos that he made in China. What makes this even more special is that a lot of the photos were taken in Shanghai. My grandfather, was from Shanghai. He would always tell us stories of him fleeing the country because of the communist takeover that was happening at that time. He left everything he had behind and started a new life in Hong Kong without a dollar in his pocket. I've always had a hard time putting a visual to his stories. But now I have these amazing photographs of that exact moment in front of me taken by Henri Cartier-Bresson. Marc Ribot was a photographer that spent a lot of time documenting life in China. I was aware of that before picking up this book but seeing his photos again in print form just felt different. What you also get in here is an awesome behind the scenes moment of him making one of his best photographs. This here shows you just how simple the process is. There's nothing fancy about it. We all take photos the same way, but these masters are just so much better at recognizing the worthy moments. Rebo is a huge inspiration to me. You'll see hints of his influence in many of my own photos. I love how his compositions are complex, but not distracting. He includes only the necessary details in his frames to tell a powerful story. And this ability takes a ton of practice to perfect.
When you take time to study these legendary photographers, you'll notice that they all have a few things in common. And that's patience, passion, and a lifetime dedication to their craft. There are a few sections in this book that covers life in Hong Kong. They're all great, but I was drawn to the ones captured by Patrick Zachman the most. Particularly this portrait of a former triad member on a rooftop in Kowloon. If you look closely, you'll see a plane flying really low in the background. It's there because the old airport in Hong Kong was located smack dead in the middle of where everyone lived. This photo brought back many memories. I remember spending a lot of time at my grandparents' place when I was little, and just being constantly blasted by the loud jet engines flying above the top of our roof. It's one of the most vivid memories I have of home. It's a unique experience that only people who have lived in Hong Kong during that period of time can relate to. If you're familiar with Bruno Barbie's work, you'll probably know that a lot of his photographs were shot on Kodachrome slide film. Knowing how hard it is to work with slide film, I have a different level of admiration and respect for photographers who use it, especially in documentary work. These photos are amongst my favorite in the book. Many people think that black and white is what captures the truth, but I personally like to believe that since our world is presented to us in color, that the truth should also be shown in color, along with all of its distractions. And black and white is more like a filter that removes us from that reality. I think Kodachrome looks perfect for this type of documentary work. As shown in these photos, the saturation of the colors is just right. Nothing is popping out too much to take away from the story, and that slight tint of blue gives it just enough of a kick to make it look a little different from normal. These are really beautiful photos. Last but not least, Stuart Franklin. The man who captured the shot of China that you see in all the history books. It's not a proud moment for the country, and I won't go into the politics behind it. But this shot is one of the most iconic shots in the world of photography and journalism. The most amazing thing about this photo is the story of how it was captured. Stuart Franklin was in his hotel room when the tanks rolled into Tiananmen Square. He immediately snapped the shots from his balcony and quickly hid the roll of film in a tea container. He passed it to a French student, together with all the other rolls that contained photos of the protest and asked him to sneak them out of the country and deliver them back to Magnum in Paris. Had he not done this, these photos would have never seen the light of day. I'm really glad they made it out, because amongst these roles was one of my favorite photos of all time.
This photograph of a man celebrating during the protests at Tiananmen Square is special for so many reasons. Just look at his face. There's pain, belief, and pure joy all mixed in together. The storm clouds also add to the drama. And that patch of light shining through onto his chest is divine. This is a photograph that makes me freeze every time I look at it. It triggers a series of emotions and questions in my mind. And that, I believe, is the power of photography. The print is going to sit in my office to serve as a source of inspiration. It will remind me to be passionate about the things that I believe in, and also reinforce the idea of what's achievable if I just continue to dedicate myself to this art form. While I may never be able to consider China as my home, this book did give me a lot of new thoughts about my relationship with it. It's a truly beautiful country, and I can definitely see myself going back there at some point in my life. For a possible photo project, or maybe just a long trip to get in touch with my roots. Who knows, I guess that's something to think about.